All right, all right, all right. We are back again. And uh, going to be plugging away here again. I've got a couple more assets I want to build. Um, I'm really, I'm really starting to worry a little bit about how full this basement is going to appear. Uh, and as a result, I want to, uh, I want to kind of get some more of that element done. Uh, I want to complete as much modeling in the basement components as I can here. And so the goal for today is to uh, complete the modeling of uh, two of the uh, the final components, um, furnishing wise for the basement, and uh, and I had thoughts of creating a uh, a metal shelf. So all the shelves I have in the basement right now are um, are wood. And I thought it might be a cool idea to uh, to make a metal shelf uh, and just pull a couple of the wood ones out and throw a couple of the metal ones in, just so it doesn't look so much like the same uh, the same wood everywhere. Uh, make it a little bit more varied. Um, so I'm gonna start today by making a uh, a set of washer and dryer type things um, that I can throw in. I don't need to go really crazy with the the modeling on these, but. Uh, it will be a fairly simple thing to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drag in a uh, a human character here and make him six feet tall, so that I have a good gauge of uh, of the height. Um, I don't actually have dimensions for this, and uh, all of the reference that's online that I'm finding. Um, is all um hey hey what's up how you doing i just popped into the uh into the channel and saw the chat um and so yeah so all of the um let me pop the chat out so i can keep an eye on it um there's the chat and so yeah so all of the uh uh the the references that you find online right now they're all in um uh, far more recent um, objects or uh, newer versions of objects. And uh, and what I want to do is I actually want to make uh, an old school version of one of these uh, washer and dryers just because it'll uh, it'll make more sense within the confines of uh, of this basement. You know, I don't want anything brand new and kind of high tech with LEDs on it. In a grungy, dirty old basement. So I'm going to make a uh, an old school version of this. Um, and I'm going off of, I mean, I had a uh, washer and dryer from the 70s and 80s when I was a kid growing up. And I'm kind of going off the, um, the memory of those, uh, those objects when I was younger uh, in terms of uh, scale. Um, yeah, see, I think that's going to work. And the nice thing about the washer dryer is that they're kind of a matched combo. Um, and so I'm going to uh, make them as a matched set. And, uh, and that will, I think that'll help out a lot too. Okay. So now that I have this here, I'm going to delete the character because I don't need them anymore. I just needed them there for scale uh, in order to start kind of getting my my proportions correct. And uh, and yeah, what I'm going to do here is um, essentially model in some of this thing. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll go washing machine first, and then uh, I'll copy the components that can be reused into the dryer, and we'll uh, we'll make a dryer out of that. Uh, okay, so first things first, convert this to an edible poly, and I'm going to put a uh, an extension on the top of this thing, which is the um, the control board for this thing. Make sure I'm not moving this. So something like that, and. Uh, you know, I almost feel like it's got to be a little bit bigger in uh, in scale here. 
I'm gonna scale it. Oops, not that. I'm gonna scale it just a little bit bigger this way. Maybe about there. Okay. We'll go and re extrude this again. Okay, so this is going to be my, uh, as I mentioned, the washing machine. And so the the goal is to, to build the components that I need for this um, and then kind of uh, add the details along the way. So there's a top cabinet here. There's a bottom cabinet down here or a bottom portion of this thing. Um, and this is actually, this is inset a little bit. Uh, and then there's going to be a rounding of everything here, but I think what I want to do, um, I'm wondering if I should round it first. And these are going to be fairly blocky objects. And so, um, I think I'll do that. Uh, the top needs to be chamfered as well as the, uh, I'll leave the bottom for now. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Let's go see what this looks like here when we give it a little bit of a chamfer, uh, to round, round the shape out. So that's odd. I don't need that selected um i may as well carry the chamfer up and back which isn't really part of the reference but it'll uh, give me cleaner topology and i'm okay with the bottom being the bottom so let's go in So that's going to work quite nicely. Um, what I'd like to do here now is um, keep looking over at my reference. Um, so this is probably let's do the, I'll do the foot um, for this thing, and then I'll I'll branch off and do the dryer as well. So this one's going to be fairly easy. I'm just going to extrude this inward. So we're going to do by local normal here. Uh, and I'm going to go in a little bit. We don't need the bottom polygon or bottom sets of polygons. And this is going to cause a little bit of an issue with the, um, the chamfer that was there. So I'm going to bring it in just a little bit to get rid of that issue. We'll kill this. And I might as well delete the ground uh, ground plane as well. I can add something else there. So this is, I mean, more or less, this is what the shape of the object is. I think the only other thing that I want to do that's going to be in common with the two um, is to give the, uh, the faceplate here a little bit of a, uh, something a little bit more visually appealing. And so I'm going to give it a bevel where the dials are. Something like that. And that's where I'm going to put all the uh, the buttons. There's actually just kind of one dial and a button on one and uh, a dial on the other. Um, so that's good. Um, the one other thing that I want to do is separate the top from the base. Um, I'm going to start off by grabbing this edge, making sure that it's planar. And then I'm going to go and grab the top of this thing and detach it. And we'll just keep it as an element for now. And all that did is it just it made a hole out of these two things here. And, uh, and the goal is to actually um, make those things kind of square off. And there should be like a, a rounding that happens in here. Um, 
Actually, instead of breaking that, maybe what I'll do... Let's try something different. Let's chamfer this. And let's bring the amount down, like so. And then I'm going to take this and scale it in. And again, I don't need it to go crazy far. But then what I'll do is I'll chamfer these two edges here. Like so. Okay. And that'll give me that top plate. I do want it to be a little bit more uh, compact. So what I'll do is move it down. Like so. And then I'm going to deselect the middle plate. And bring that down as well. And I think that'll give me something decent. That is absolutely it. Um, throwing in... Uh, throwing in, I got a washer and dryer combo. Um, that really I've been meaning to make since like day one. It was like, it was one of the first things that I was like, oh, I'll just be able to knock that off in a couple hours and it'll be done. Uh, and then I never made them. And so, uh, this is one of those, I'm, I'm, I mentioned this a little earlier, might've been before you were here, Snow, but, um, Brandon, I'm, uh, I'm starting to get a little worried about how full the basement looks. Um, and I don't want to resort to having too many reused assets. Um, I, you know, I obviously want some some assets reused because it's an important part of of optimization and making sure that this stays clean. But um, at the same time, you know, I kind of I kind of need to have some things be different in the uh, in the design. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do now is this is going to be the dryer. I'm going to hold shift and bring the washer over here. And I'm just going to get them fairly close together without any penetration between the two. So that'll be the washer dryer combo. Um, now, in order to make them a washer and dryer, uh, I need to put the opening for the dryer, the opening for the washer. And so I'm going to do that by creating a new shape that I'm going to use as a stencil to cut these things out. That's the idea. I mean, it's it's a balance, right? You're always kind of you always kind of of, of playing around with these two things of uh, performance and um, something like that. Performance and um, and you know how good it looks or how interesting it is. Uh, no, what am I doing? Spline. And so yeah, you know, I want to uh, I want to make it look good. Make these guys corners. Uh, I want to make it look good, but at the same time, you know, I need it to perform as well. Um, this would be different if I was just making this as a show-off piece. Um, you know, in terms of, like, look, portfolio piece of, of you know, look what I can do. Um, that would be one thing. But uh, let's do 90 for this. Make sure this one's at zero. I just want to make sure they're not actually going through each other. Yeah, they're actually going through each other. Okay, so we'll set this to 91. Um, and so, yeah, it's a little bit of a, you know, if I was just making this for me, if it was just something for a portfolio piece, to show off what I'm capable of doing and, you know, uh, that type of thing, then I would have a different approach to what I'm doing in that, you know, I would... I would cheat things a little bit more in terms of their polygon count. And I would, um, you know, be looking at... That's not bad. Um, I would be cheating things in terms of their polygon count a little bit more, right? Making the... Uh, uh, what am I streaming after the basement? After the basement, I'm going to go back to my mask project. Um... And that's the thing that I'd actually rather be working on right now than this. Um, but I kind of got to get this done. 
Okay, so I'm going to attach my stencils together here. We're going to go into the interpolation, and I'm going to bring this down to three. Yeah, I think three is going to work. And then uh, we're going to go and extrude this. So let's go to modifiers, extrude. And we're only going to get one direction out of this, but that's okay. Convert to edible poly. And I'm going to grab this one. So those are the ones that I want. So I can invert and delete. And now I've got my stencils built. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 I'm stoked for people to play it. Um, I don't know. I don't know how excited I am. Um, like I've I've played the game a bunch, and you know my my kids have played the game a bunch, and so it's not it loses some of that magic for us. Um, you know it's it'll be a little bit different when uh, when I've got people like you guys that can go play it, and so that'll be interesting to see that happen uh, and to get you know get input from people and see what people think. Um, but you know, there's one side of game development that, uh, not a lot of people talk of, uh, at the schools. And, uh, part of that is that, you know, a lot of the teachers don't have a, a ton of experience doing games. Um, but there's a, uh, another side of game development that you kind of want to stay away from that is not pleasant. Um, which is when a game comes out. And you start getting uh, you start getting feedback from people, um, and that can be that can be really really toxic. Um, you know, not not everybody loves the same thing, and people are entitled to their opinion. And the anonymity of the internet uh, allows for, well, frankly, a hell of a lot of anonymity, and uh, and it makes people a little bit more brazen to say things um, about, you know, a game or a movie or a TV show that uh, you probably wouldn't say to someone's face. Um, you know, I try and stay away from the comment section on, uh, on videos about the game and uh, that type of thing. Um, because, you, you know, inevitably you're going to hear something that somebody hates what it is that you made. And people, man, people can can hate with a lot of freaking passion. And so it's one of those things that, um, you know, can really, really, really mess with your psyche. When, uh, when you have a game that's about to come out or a game that just shipped and somebody goes and says, like, a ton of hurtful things about it, uh, that can really mess you up in the head where, like, you know, I... I put I put years into this and in you don't have anything nice to say about it you just think it's stupid um you know that kind of thing that kind of thing can hit you pretty hard if you're not uh if you're not ready for it oh what the fuck is happening that's what I want to delete um, and so, yeah, so I try to stay away from, uh, you know, obviously, uh, why are you doing this? Um, it's one of those things that can, uh, really, really, really hit you hard if you're not, uh, not ready for it. And so I've been kind of, th I've been through that, uh, that grinder a couple of times already. And, uh, and, you know, I've, I've, I've heard the the nasty things that some people have to say about a project that I worked on and um I stay away from comment sections now you know it's not it's not something they're not going to tell me anything about the game I don't I don't already know um it's nice when you get a a good review but uh you know it's it's also pretty hurtful when uh 
when you get some of these these negative comments. Um, and this happens too with, I mean, uh, I'm not privy to all of the emails that the studio gets, but it's it's definitely something that, you know, the studio gets bomb blasted with, you know, both good and bad emails, right? Of like uh, people saying, oh, you, your game brought me out of a, a pit of depression and I was really, really bummed out. And, you know, your game got me through that. And, you know, that's really, really nice to hear. Um, and then the flip side of that is, you know, people threatening you. Um, you know, I, I wasted my money on this and, um, you know, you, you couldn't even do this. You couldn't even do that. And, uh, people just get giggly angry as, as it were. And so, yeah, it's one of those things I can kind of just stay away from. Yeah, that's the other thing too, right? Is that you get a ton of uh you get a ton of yes men that just, you know I can't believe it, this game's awesome. You did such a great job and whatnot. And um this is one of those things that I tell students all the time that, you know, a pat on the back doesn't get anyone anywhere. You know, the the thing that you want, the the criticism that you want God damn, this sucks. What are you doing? This cut did not work at all. Okay, I'm going to try something a little bit different here. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same thing that happened on there. So I'm just going to inset this until I get it about the right shape that I want. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's one of those things. And, you know, this is, it's definitely something that being a teacher um, changes, it changes the way the, the critique sandwich, you know, that's, it's an old school way of, of doing things, right? Where you try and not hurt the person's feelings. But a, a pat on the back doesn't get anyone anywhere. You know, no one improves from, from someone telling you you did a good job. You know, the only way you improve is um is is by finding elements of wrong in your model you know and fixing that and so you know it's it's a little harsh but you need uh you need that kind of criticism in order to grow okay i think that's gonna work i'm gonna go and detach this as an element here now then let's go and hide this thing here too. Then we'll go and clean this stuff up. That's the idea, you know, Brandon, if you, uh, you, if you don't get things like that being said to you, right, that's when you stop growing as an artist. And that, that gets harder as you get further into your career. Um, honest feedback right now is one of the hardest things for me to get from anyone. Um, 
Because it either comes from, from one of two places. It comes from someone not knowledgeable enough about the subject matter, um, or not as knowledged about the subject matter as myself. At which point the feedback doesn't have much weight to it. Um, which is, you know, a really, really harsh thing. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't help me at all to say something looks, looks off, you know. Um, you might point out that something looks off that, you know, I didn't notice it looked off. But odds are, if you can tell it looked off, then I could already tell it looked off. And so, that kind of feedback is a little bit of a, a bummer. Um, and so, you know, having people like that that are just not, not as knowledgeable about the subject matter means that I don't get, I don't get as, as near, um, quality feedback. Um, and then the other thing is that it, it, it also comes from, um, from people that are just a little bit more harsh on the artwork. Um, there was a, uh. A student of mine, a former student of mine, um, who was posting about my my channel, my YouTube channel, uh, on a Discord group that he was a part of, and I I kind of had a little bit of a panic attack when I heard that this student was like, well, I mean, he was talking about me on Discord, and it made me want to go like in investigate uh, what he was saying, you know, and go and go and check out what he was saying, and. Uh, and in the end, you know, he, he wasn't saying anything nasty. He was just saying, oh, you know, this guy, this guy was a teacher of mine and he was really knowledgeable and he's got a YouTube channel if you guys are looking to learn how to make games. Um, and so he wasn't, like, he wasn't saying anything wrong or anything like that. Um, but when I showed up into the Discord server to, to just check and see what he was doing, um, there were a few people there that were, you know, not even at the point where they had taken game art in school yet just people that were kind of fond of game art um and messed around on you know on the side doing stuff and uh and one of them had critiqued my portfolio and uh it was really funny to hear what this kid had to say um you know a kid that, that literally didn't know anything about games other than the fact that you know he's probably got a playstation and plays it um and so it was really really interesting to, to you know see that kind of feedback um where he was like you know stuff's okay i don't think he's an industry professional you know his stuff looks like like student work at best and i was like well, that's really funny because i've got 20 or 30 games under my belt it's really not student work um but, uh, you know, it's also people that don't really know what goes into making games, too, right? With this, um, this level of feedback that is, um, you know, rooted in, in, it's, it's, it's kind of like someone who's seen a movie critiquing an actor. Where, like, I, I get it, you watched Avengers, but that doesn't make you a proper critic of movies. Um, and that's where, you know, a lot of this stuff can get a little, uh, a little funky, a little hard to, uh, to, to find the good criticism from the bad. So I'm going to go in and chamber around the door here too. I've got a I've got a really neat trick that I'm going to use here in a moment, um, to just speed me up a little bit. I'm doing a lot of work in the dryer at the moment, and not uh, not worrying about the washer so much. I'm just trying to get the shape of this one to work, and the reason for that is that I'll be able to reproduce this much faster on the other one. So I'm just doing chamfer around the door so that I've got a rounded kind of fall off in here. Which is going to read quite nicely. Um, I should put a grip or a handle or something on it here. Um, let's go and fix the triangulation here again. 
So I got my... Um, George Brown is now starting to uh, pump out uh, information about the, uh, the upcoming semester. And I got my course outlines emailed to me today to kind of uh, be able to get into that preparation mode of going over the uh, going over the assignments and making sure that you know uh, there isn't anything I want to change from last semester or whatnot. Um, my character class is is it isn't anything I need to change. I've been very pleased with how things have been going in that in that area for quite some time. Um, but the other course that I'm teaching is an intro to modeling course, and I'm not the only instructor here. And so I'm I'm taking a very passive um, approach to this. The, the the other instructor is is actually a former student of mine. who's quite quite talented, and uh, and I'm letting her take point on that. Um, so I didn't really I, I said I'm good with you know whatever for the uh, for the the assignments. Um, and I figured what I'd do is let her um, choose, you know, what she wanted to do assignment-wise. And, uh, and I was like, I'll do, I'll do, whatever she does, I'll do the exact same thing. Yeah, man, that's... I hear you. And then people don't understand the, the scope of games, right? Uh, they don't understand what goes into making one. They don't understand the cost of making one. Um, and, you know, the scale, just the, the pure scale of what's involved in uh, in game making. But it's kind of the same thing with a movie too, right? You know, for whatever reason, people get it a little bit more when it comes to a movie. Um, whereas they're a little, <laughs> a little less understanding when it comes to, to games. So here's the uh, here's the trick I'm going to do to get the um, the shape on the on the on the washer is I'm just going to make a new object here out of this, which I can go place at 91, and let's do this in the top view, and I'll just go and place it here, kind of you know about where I want it. And then if I go and grab my height information from here, that vertex. Do 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 do. Interaction. That's the idea. I'm going to have a little bit of a pivot point issue here, so I'm going to have to manipulate it. As long as I can get it on the right mesh. Like that. So there, now I put it in the right place. I'll grab the border and scale it in. And scale it in. And then we'll just attach the two. I'll grab the outer borders and bridge them. And then we'll go to vertices and target weld. I got another tiger, target welder. I can try to remove that edge. And because of the triangulation, it'll just be a little bit easier to target weld. Which means I didn't really need to bridge in the first place. But that'll give me the, the washing machine. Okay, so we'll do uh, a dial for the two of these things, a little button for this one, and I'll call these guys done, we'll texture them and throw them into the world. Uh, let's see, we're gonna start this with a cylinder, and make the dial about yay big. Go in here, kill this, and bring it back into the right position. And run it to an edible poly. I don't really care too much about uh, number of anything on this. We're going to go in. It's going to go in a lot. So I'll pull it back out. Then I'll extrude. 
It justifies my needs. All I really want to do. Nope, not that one. That one. It justifies my needs. Yeah, send me a new one, dude. And I'll take a look at a new one. Let me switch this to local. Okay, dial, dial, and the last thing I gotta make is just a little button for the dryer, the starting button, and I'll call these two guys, at least a little polywise done, and we'll start texturing them. You got it, pal? Uh, okay, so let's see. Button. I'm just going to make a little box. So I'm just going to go copy the rotation from this guy. And put it on this guy. And now I got a start button. Okay. And you handle your own. So my original idea was actually have one of these things open and put one of the totems inside it. Um, but I'm going to nix that because I don't want to bother making the inside of this thing. I'm just making these things now to fill up space. Till it's gone. I do till I do till it's gone. That you finally found. Okay. Um I'm gonna start naming stuff here. We'll attach these guys together. I'll detach the doors just to make sure I get cleaner bakes. It doesn't mean I have to come deal with it. And Moran, detach. So I'll grab this and attach that. Whoa, till it's gone. Till it's gone. What could I do if I do till it's gone? Okay, so uh, dials, button. Hmm. Washer. Dryer. And what would I do when I do what I can? Isles low. It's been a good decade without modeling. Whew. 
Who are you, Raging Bunny? I feel like you're one of my students. I'm feeling like you were an RCC student. You're being dramatic. Oh, Cassandra. Cassandra GB, Cassandra? That sounds about right. I always expected you to come back. I didn't think you were done done when you left. I had you during the uh, during the strike, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so I'm going to go spit these guys out. Uh, you did superheroes, right, Cassandra? I'm trying to remember, uh, Ah, that seems like a good choice. That was uh, that was always what you were better at. This project I'm making here. So when you did your superheroes, Cassandra, we did that uh, roulette wheel in class. And the project that I'm doing now, the little thing that I'm doing now, is the replacement. Yep, we did Overwatch characters. I actually did Overwatch characters uh, four times in two years, which is why I'm friggin' done with it now. I have no interest of going back to Overwatch, and so that's what uh, that's what I'm making here now is the the next thing. Um, I had a little Overwatch game that we played that uh, uh, had uh, similar to the roulette, something that uh, allowed students to pick what they were going to be modeling, and um, and I've gotten tired of Overwatch because I did it too many times. And uh, and now we're done with it. We're moving on. Overwatch is a thing of the past. <laughs> uh, let's see. Projects. Uh, what am I doing? Cabin in the Woods, FBX, Combo. C -c -c combo Breaker! Okay. So let's do some very quick UVs on these suckers. And, uh, see what we can't get done here. Come on, you. So first things first, I know the inner edge here in the split is going to be a split. I'll go grab that first. I know that the bevel 
is going to get its own split. Just so I can get a proper texture on there without it bleeding into the white ceramic that is everything else of this thing. Um... I'll split around here. And then I think I'm going to end up going down the middle. If only I had the amount of hours I have in the game invested in my work. That is a problem that a lot of people really, really struggle with. And it's something that I try to make a little bit more obvious to students in the first couple of weeks of class. That, um, you know, you're, you're free to play games in class um, and not do, you know, homework. Um, but if you spend your time in school playing games instead of learning how to make them, then when you graduate, you're not going to know how to make games. You're just going to know how to play them, which for most people is a skill they already have. You aren't, you aren't alone in that. And, you know, it isn't, it isn't my job to tell people how to spend their time. Um, and I often get people that, uh, you know, when they do, um, when they do mess things up a little bit along the way and they're like, oh man, I should have been doing this. I should have been doing that. And, uh, and they say, why didn't you, you know, why didn't you tell me not to do this? And it's like, well, it's not my place. You know, you're an adult. You're going to spend your time how you want to spend your time. I can warn you of the pitfalls, but uh, in the end, you know, I can show someone the path, but I can't make them walk it. But you aren't you aren't alone in that, Cassandra. There've been <laughs> I've been teaching what ten years now, and uh, there's been more than one student per semester that have been like that. You should, and it's, that's not something that you can teach someone, right? It's, you need to want something bad enough to, to put the time in. Of our lives. You do. You've got to find a good balance, and you've got to keep up with it too, right? Um, this is this is often what I hear from from friends in the industry too that um, you get complacent when you get in. You know, you, many, many of you who are students, former students, um, haven't, haven't had to deal with that complacency yet, where, you know, it becomes your nine to five and you stop doing it afterwards and you stop growing at that point. And the number of artists that I've known that have stopped growing as artists, you know, they learn, they learn the way to do something and they don't get any better than that one way they know how to do it where you know this is an industry that is ever changing and the technology we use is ever changing and the way that you do things is ever changing and if you don't grow and evolve with it you get left behind and uh the number the number of people i know in the industry that have been like that that have been left behind just because uh of that complacency you know where they get they get comfortable doing something uh, a specific way or, you know, whatnot. Um, and the, the best example I have of this was a friend of mine that um, when I met him in the industry, uh, he had never used a normal map before. Uh, and it was because, you know, he's, he worked on models um, in a time where, where you, you didn't need a normal map. Uh, normal maps weren't 
weren't part of the regular everyday workflow. Um, and he just never bothered learning high poly and how to use a normal map to help influence the shape of your model when normal maps became the the standard of of working um you know it was one of those things that he just didn't bother and you know got left behind because he wasn't capable of of working the way that you know now all of a sudden everybody was working and you know that's that's really really tough to see that and you know it wasn't it wasn't really through any any fault of his that this complacency happened you know this was a guy in his uh mid 30s who had spent a good you know 10 12 years in the industry getting good at this you know aspect of the job that he wanted to have and uh and in, in the end um you know was just having a life you know getting married and uh, having kids and whatnot and that that was his complacency you know he he was doing that stuff instead of continuing to get better at his trade and it didn't take long before that was it you know he wasn't able to do anything else why is this what are these oh that's the front uh I feel like that edge should not be split. This one. Only one that walks beside me. That thing is definitely square, but it's... Oh, oh, oh. That would be an issue. Hmm... I hear you some are. Okay, let's see what kind of a pack job we get here. Uh, keeping in mind that the button, uh, I had N-Gons, screw you, Maya. So I'd totally forgotten that there was an, a polygon on the back of this thing. And as a result, this stupid thing ended up creating triangles on my mesh. See how well this works. Well, you told me you were dying. Well, that's good, guys. Keep working at it. If it's something you love, you know, the trick is to keep doing it, and you'll get there. Cool, dude. I'll take a look at her. Uh, I'll do, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a video together for you tomorrow. This moment for all my life alone, alone. I remember, I remember, don't worry. 
How could I ever forget it's the first time? But I know the reason why. I got a feeling like, oh, it triangulated. Yes. I'm aware now. To you and me, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Yeah, I done fucked this up. Okay, let's go to object mode here. I really should just bring these back in from Max. I tried to clean off the back of it where the end gone was. Totally forgetting that it is no longer an Engon. And that Maya decided to quote unquote clean my shit. And made a lovely, lovely mess of everything. In the air tonight, alone. Okay. Alone, alone. This should work better. Uh, let's see. Do I want another break on this? I do want another break on this. Let's get rid of the tops. Oh, uh, you know what? Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. I should get rid of the end guns on this and max and re unwrap this because I won't be able to high poly this. And if I can't on hot if I can't high poly it, then I'm in trouble. Okay. Let's get out of isolation mode, grab everything again. Oh, the button. The button. What? Why are you not cutting? Weird. Not sure why that happened. Okay. Let's do a pack and bring this back into Max. You got your email, Brandon. Come on, back, 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 back.
See how fast this goes. Okay. Not too bad. I'm going to straighten this out. That one's already straight. I'm going to clean those in max. Climb on every run. May you stay forever young. Okay, good enough. We can do the rest in max. So where were we? Desktop projects? No. No desktop projects. Uh, cabin in the woods. FBX. And this was my combo. Light surrounding you. Stand up right in your song. I want, where am I going? Projects. Kevin in the woods. Uh, Fibex. Combo. Mm hmm. Yes, come in. Yes, come in. Oh. Oh, what happened? What happened to the dials? How is that a thing? Uh, geometry all quadrify. Yeah, that did fucking nothing. Oh, Maya, I hate you. I hate all Autodesk, man. The amount of crap I'm going to put up with with this software. Not so much, eh? And may you stay forever young. May you stay forever young. Okay, you know what? Fuck this. You'll do it the first way. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one's fine. I was just screwing up the UVs on this mesh. But I can't do anything about it. At least it's a simple thing to UV. Take me away to paradise. Good enough. Okay. How bad did that mess up the UVs? It didn't. Oh, no, it did. Oh, no, it did. It did. By myself. What is this? Hunt mess, that's what it is. Take me away to paradise. Okay, where's my motivation? 
Motivation. Photo motivation. Inspiration. Stupid. Stupid software. Okay. I'm gonna do these guys in max here. Eh, it might not work. Here. Here. What you will. Going back and forth between the software in this short amount of time always makes me lose my mind. Okay, that is the plate. So those guys are good. That is the back end. Sides and dial. So that's good. These guys. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to purposely screw up my uh, texel density in order to be able to get a little bit more uh, writing on these things. So I think I'm gonna go down about that size. And I'm gonna put the rings inside the doors. And I'll put the dials up above. guys up there okay low poly mcdunn no you did not did you oh yeah it's maya get yourself a warm glass of go fuck yourself stupid ass software so let's properly clean these smoothing groups this time Okay, this guy. It's a new group. And a new group. Same old story. There we go. Okay. Please for that one. Do, do, do. Boo do do do. Temporary same old story. All right, all right, all right, all right. Smooth groups on those guys are. Well, I'm gonna call it good enough. The doors. Mm -hmm. Done. The dials. Do 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 do. Done enough. Let's do. Let's fix these triangulated messes here. I'm what's right, I'm the enemy.
Who are you? God damn it. Okay. I'll call that swimming group done. <laughs> so let's go to the layers. Button low, dials low, doors low, dryer low, washer low. All the lows are done. New layer, low. Grab everything, clone it. Make sure it's not an instance. Add to a new layer called hi. Hello there. Hide that. We're going to go and rename these things. Tools, rename. We're going to remove the last six and add a new suffix of ha. And we'll get rid of the base name. And those are good to go. And now uh, is the time when we add uh, modifiers. Company always on the run. Destiny and a turbo smooth. Now, now we gotta fix it. I was born a shotgun in my hand. I'm the I make my final stand That's why they call me I can't deny Band Band Company Let's do this Until the day I die. Mm -hmm. Deserters, we've been called. And true away the sun. Now these towns, they all know my name. It's a claim to fame. That's why they call me. I can not deny. Okay, that guy looks high poly. Until the day I die. Until the day I die. Eye for an eye. Tooth for tooth. We are bud. Vandor. We all gotta die. <sighs> Another one. Another one. Okay, doors are done. Uh, dials are done. Do, 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 do. Okay, back into here. That's why they call me.
No, don't do that. Don't do that. Here we go. Done. So let's get these out of here. Up, oh, OBJ. Hey, don't miss that. I'm what your net said. So the Buddha of the funky Buddha. I don't think I have Holly the button. I'm call that a whole bunch of I don't give a fuck. Okay, get rid of that. Bring these guys back. Make sure I got them all. Bum 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 bum. Ba da dum bum 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 bum. Kill a man. Okay, let's go substance painter these guys. And we'll get them into the project. Open painter. I'm coming at ya. And you know I have to get ya. To run the interference. Once I tried to come in my home. Bring your ass out. And I have to work your pass out. Alright. So now that we're in Painter. We're going to go and do some baking. Ba da dum bum 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 bum. So let's go grab our high poly mesh object high. Uh, if you haven't been paying attention or you haven't noticed, I've been recycling the same OBJ for every mesh that I've been baking, um, and I've been doing that so that I don't end up with a folder full of crazy high poly models. I just keep overwriting the same high. I don't need to save them. I don't need to keep them. Once I'm pleased with the texturing, the, the high is useless to me, so I get rid of it. Um, okay, we're going to do that. Curve position thick. We're going to do that. And let's bake. And let's see. Let's see what we get. So it's a little worrisome that the panel and the dryer here just shows up as gray in every bake. Um, I think it's an indication that it's not in the zero to one or that something, something else horribly wrong has happened. Um, as you see here, that is absolutely the case that something went wrong with it um that needs fixing and so yeah i don't know uh i obviously i messed something up here so we're going to check this in the low poly first because that is my prediction was that its uvs are elsewhere and indeed it's got <laughs> it's got no no uv space Ah, oh, Maya, Maya, Maya. Dug, 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 dug. Okay, and we'll just scale it down. Stupid software. How long has it been since I complained about Autodesk? Not long enough. Maya does that on occasion when you do a planar projection. And uh, and the mesh that you're uh, unwrapping had something that was uh, perpendicular to the projection. 
it ends up giving you nothing. And so, yeah, and a little bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, at least it's one of those things that I've encountered. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how good this is, but I've put up with Autodesk's bullshit long enough that I recognize it's bullshit when it happens. So we're gonna go swap out the uh, combo. I'm gonna swap this out. I should get funky normals, which I do. Okay, and we're gonna bake again. And we'll just reuse the same settings here. Because now they should fucking work. How to listen and let me make a decision. I sit here locked inside my head. Thing you said, the silence says nowhere. Way too fast. Okay. Hooray. So, first things first is go and get a believable. Um, Mm, painted ceramic look to these things. And so, oh, let's go see. Oh, I can put rust on this automatically. Oh, that's pretty. Let's go shift these over into... I'm actually going to do them. I don't want to do them white. I'm going to do them tan in color. It is neat that it can do rust all by its lonesome. Doesn't actually look all that good. I'm not going to use it. Uh, let's warm this tan up a little bit. No. Nope. Fuck off, Frost. And put it about there. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, fuck it. I make my own. Okay. So I'm going to start with paint. Go make it the tan color I want them to be. It's too pink. That's a little bit more in the tan than I wanted. Okay. Uh, height. I'm going to add a Perlin noise. And I'm going to add a little bit of orange peeling to the paint here. Try and get this down to a scale that makes sense. So something like that. I'm going to go into height. We'll drop this down to 1%. Oh, come on. And 1% is too strong. So I'll throw it into a folder. And now I have percentage on the folder. And that's good. Just enough to give it a little bit of a warble. And this is kind of like industrial painted, right? This is not a, it's not a Ferrari. And so having a little bit of, that's called orange peeling when you get that in paint. Um, which is actually, you find it on cars a lot. It's an indication that something was um, not painted very well. But it's just a little bit of a breakup in the, uh, in the, um, in the texture it's it's little bits of dust and things in the air that end up in the paint when it's being sprayed on and so gives you a little bit more of a uh, believability to it when you when you get it to look that way uh the next thing i'm going to do is add some smudgy stuff in the rough yeah exactly it's just it's a quick paint job right you see this a lot in uh in appliances um, you know, it's not a it's not a high end sports car, and so you don't end up with a high end sports car paint job. Uh, okay, so let's go to the roughness. Oh yeah, yeah, it's one of those things, man. 
Okay, so grunge. I'm going to go down to the bottom. And some really nice smeary uh, kind of wiped type stuff here. Uh, now, the problem with this is that the scaling that I've got set here um, is for everything that's in here. So it's not going to work for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fill to this. And that fill is just going to be the rough. And now I have my own scale for the rough. So we'll go back down to the smeary stuff here again. Like this. And what I can do is I can actually set this to be the, the scale that I want it to be on here. Which is going to look a little bit something like that. Again, it's stronger than I want it to be. But that's kind of the goal here is you you put it on and you pull it back. And so I just want to kind of smear it a little bit. I am going to add a fill below this. With some roughness in it. Okay. That's good. It's starting to look like we're getting just a little bit of imperfection in the paint here as well and a little bit of use. Again, I'm kind of going brand new with these things for now and then I'll, I'll fuck them up later. Uh, okay, so I want a uh, a backing for these things. Oh, that's funny. This one doesn't look anywhere near as good as the other one did. That's okay. I don't care either. I don't care. We're past. We're past that now. And again, if this was a portfolio piece, I might be caring a little bit more. But uh, boy, oh boy, am I not? So we're gonna do a black mask. And we'll grab, yeah, just the single polygon in the back. Let's see if I can find a dryer uh, back plate. Mm. So I'm just trying to find, uh, if I can, I'm just Googling here faceplates for dryers um, so that I can find something like this. Um, and if I can actually find a sticker of something like this, control panel. Let's try that. So finding an actual uh, image, an actual decal of this kind of thing uh, is going to make my life a hell of a lot simpler than I don't have to go and make my own. I can just go and stamp that in. So I think I'm going to do this. It's already kind of the right colors. So let's go and save this image as, and we're going to go to Projects, Cabin in the Woods, and Reference. And this is uh, Washer Stuffs. And is it already square? It's not square. That's going to cause a problem. So I needed to be scared in a square to bring it in and stamp it. And also, I can, while I have it in Photoshop, I can do away with the, uh, some of the, the coloring that I'm getting from the, um, the, the fact that it's on a curved surface. Dryer stuffs, dryer stuffs, dryer stuffs. No, I don't want you to open, you bastard. I want you to go in here. Okay. Uh, wow, that looks way lower res than it did here. Okay, let's see if we can find a larger version of this. That looks a little too high tech.
Oh, that's 1,200 by 1,200. Why does it look so low res? Boom. Okay. Whatever. I'll make do. All right, dude. Talk to you later. Don't you know the bitch came back? What the fuck? So all I'm doing here is just trying to get rid of the fact that there was a curve to this thing. She's so fucking stupid that she's singing along. Okay, good enough. Let's just make sure it's square. Bitch came back. Thought she was a goner, but the bitch came back. Okay, that'll work. Now I can bring it in here. And we're going to bring this in as a texture for the current project only. I turned off my phone, but that's the only freaking way she'll leave me alone. So let's get rid of this. And they never shut up. The way it ought to be. Don't tell me. Very next day, oh, the bitch came back. So I'm going to see how. It looks like I'm going to be able to do this. Let's go in and do it in uh, 2D. Look who's laughing now. Um, I got an alpha on my brush. That I don't want. What the hell's going on? No. The bitch came back the very next day. My controls aren't working. Yeah, that's not going to do what I wanted to do. This one. I'm going to rotate this. Come on. Okay. Just think about it. Let me try doing this with my stylus. Come on. I didn't even hit that button. You don't understand when I'm attempting to explain. the stroke opacity that I need to bring down in order to get this in the right place. But then it doesn't paint it the right way. Just think about it. 
You'll get it. You've done not satisfied. Too much on your mind. Why can I not? That size. Why is that size too? That doesn't make any sense. There it is. You and me, we're through. That's what I wanted. Okay, let's do the same thing here. You're no good for me. Thank God it's over. Okay, now let's go back to 3D. Oh, let's kill this brush too. Let's add a black mask here. You make believe that nothing's wrong until you're dying. Boom, ba -da doom No, let's pick that color. That color. Diane, dying on me. You feel that everybody's the same. Okay, let's put this now here, and then we're going to color these dials. Do -do -do -do. Just think about it. You'll get it. Okay. So I'm going to treat that as brand new off the assembly line. What they're going to look like. And now what I want to do is fuck them up. So I'm going to start by throwing some rust on. And we're going to do this as a triplanar projection. And then we're going to add a black mask. In the black mask, we're going to add a generator. In the generator, we're going to add the dripping rust. And we'll give it a good chunk of rust. Uh, let's bring the contrast down a little bit. Increase the spreading and the smoothing. Bring the drips down. Smooth the drips out a little bit. And something like that. Which I think it reads okay. I'm going to add another layer of rust. We're going to add the coarse rust. And this one, we're going to do a black bitmap. And in the smart masks, we're going to do like a ground dirt on this. So it looks like. Mm hmm. Like there was some water damage or something on the bottom that bled up. Wanna blow my fucking head off sometimes. Makes me think the world has gone officially insane. 
Let's add some dirt. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Respectable to women. Ain't Chris Brown. I don't feel the need to hit him. Um, dirt hay. Make you reconsider every time you go online to find a babysitter. Let's see what this guy's like. I don't like it. Pretend that we're so into it. Just to make a thrill of it. Let's bring the levels up. Uh, it's too much. On here, I think. Kanye West says Rock is dead. Guess he falls from meds again. He got with that Kardashian. Reality stars are heroes. That's not bad. I want to blow my fucking head off. It's still way too strong there. Just to make a thrill of it. Think the world has gone officially insane. Bum bum bum. Think the world has gone officially insane. Stop and take the time to realize it's over. If you live to have some kids, they'll lock you in a home to die there all alone. Not that you ever known. And I'm the fucking king. We're all in agreement. You'll probably just delete it. Wanna blow my fucking head off. So the only other thing that I want to do here is, uh, is add some... I don't even think it needs that. I was going to add some metal underneath. It makes me... Insane. Blow my fucking head off. Think the world has gone officially insane. I'm gonna rough this up. I'm gonna do this kind of slimy brown, brownie green color. Uh, smart masks. Where's my ground dirt? And we're gonna go into base color. We'll tone this down a little bit. I'm in. <laughs> We're gonna balance up. Into me at last. Okay, let's get these into the basement. Export textures. Where am I going? Projects, Cabin in the Woods, Textures. Okay. Let's jump into the project now. Maps, cabin in the woods. And I know where this is going. Uh, I'm not where I thought I was. Okay. Let's grab meshes. Import the combo. 
right here, right now. Know what I believe inside. Do 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 do. Uh, I'm gonna bulk rename these things. And we're gonna get rid of underscore Lambert one underscore. And we'll replace that with an underscore. Bring those in. Set this guy to be non SRGB. Jesus, why are you so big? Waking up, waking up, waking up. Okay, there's that. There's my combo. I'll go back into the meshes. Find the combo. M I combo. Do 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 do. But she ain't me. Uh, one eighty. Bum 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 bum. Light train rack. Kind of center these a little bit here. Go see what they look like. Yeah, that works. Just like an in a call around. Let's go straight for the gold. Hey, hey. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do, uh, just to make these things... Uh, not just believable, but uh, fit more within the uh, the confines of, of what they're supposed to be is uh, the the dryer duct that should be here. Mm. Maybe I'll put that off for now. There's something that I gotta do to make them look believable. Uh, okay, so I got those done. Let's reset this. Uh, let's import uh, totem meshes and the goblin. Cyanide, sweet tooth, suicide. So we're going to go do some UVs here. No, I'm not going to bother with, uh, with Maya for this. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just planar map it to get rid of any seams I don't want and shouldn't be there. Um, because that's what that does. And then I'm going to go pick an edge to split. I think I'm going to split this edge and the also this edge. Which will give me three even bands of UVs. And then I'm going to do this. And it's not a fucking... Look what you heard. It's what you're hearing. Listen. Listen. 
Thanks, gonna give it to you what? Okay. Oh, that one needs a split. Okay. This guy. We're going to mirror. you want to do uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh max doesn't like it when you use max to do max like things Stupid software. I'm gonna start having to put a tally up of how many times I curse this f f software. You know what I'm gonna do here? Just put a few candles up here. And maybe I'll put one on the ground. Let's put one up on the table here, too. really tough because like I know there's a table here and it's really hard to see at least when you're looking at it like this but once you're actually in game mode uh, the engine does brighten things up a little bit so you can see a little bit more back here but that's what I want to have is just kind of getting a weird lag um making sure that it is it is pretty visible oh yeah there's no collision on this pipe or that pipe okay anyway let's save all Bullshit I can't take. Walk away. Let's see if it saved anything. Nope. Mm, fuck you, Max. into my arse. I know and it's getting love. It's so much better than uh -huh. 
It's not like you to run away. Let's see if I can do it in Maya without getting a crash. So, planar map. I'm going to set my edges. When you're going down on me. Let's go change the color here. Okay, then this one, this one, boom, 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 boom. I cannot make it through all the things you do. Well, it's gotta be more than you and me. Okay, seams are done. Sure. Every breath you take, it's all like anything, it's all like anything. When you're going down on me. I think that's the middle. Addicted to you. It seems to work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. String these. And then just go pack the whole damn thing. Slip, kid, slip, kid. It's a hard, hard world. Okay, so I'm going to bring in... You know what? I almost don't even need to do this. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to use a high poly for this mesh. I'm just going to do it the way and set up. Uh, we're going to go 2K on this one. I don't need that open. Going back to Maya. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two totems on one texture. Um, only because I've got a lot of dead space there, and I think it'll be just fine if I do that. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? I'm going to start with a helix. I'll do something like this. So let's set radius number one at 12. Radius number two, 12. The height, 72. And the turns, 12. This gives me a lovely little bit of a corkscrew. Slip, kid, slip, kid. I'm going to go into, uh, convert this one, spline. And I'm going to set the interpolation to 1. 
And the reason I'm doing that is that there are a hell of a lot of freaking vertices on this. I'm going to set my interpolation to 1, and then I'm going to put a normalize on here. And the normalize is going to allow me to pick and choose how many vertices I get on this. And so... I'm going to do this from above. And because what I need is that, that where they line up again. But what this is going to do is essentially give me a lower poly version of what I was dealing with earlier. So let's do 24. No, this has got a half. Six. It's ugly up close, but I think it'll hold up. I might have to do some changes to it. Okay. So what I'm going to add now, let's convert it to an editable spline again, is an extrude. Like that. Eyes of the forgotten, we were younger than, so much younger than. Let's see how close I got this here. Yeah, close enough. Convertible poly. We're going to flip it because it's inside out. We're going to grab the borders, vertices, and we're going to do a weld. And I'm just going to bring it up until it snaps. Hey, Rich. How you doing, pal? Are you with me? The next thing I need to do is find out the height of this one. A copy. And we'll set a slice plane. And I'll paste it to that height. And slice. And then we'll grab ooh, this one. Right, that's still one. That's still one. Okay. Copy that. Slice plane. I'm going to lose a slice plane. There it is. You are into my head. Okay, so the reason for doing the slice plane is that I now have a very clean flat on either side, top and bottom, like so. So this gives me a corkscrew mesh, which looks a little something like this. The next thing I'm gonna do is grab this edge, which goes all the way around the corkscrew. I don't need it to follow all the way up. Come back to my dad. And I'll get rid of the bottom here, which also is unnecessary. Okay, we're going to chamfer this. Which I think works. Then I'm going to grab the center edge, which hopefully doesn't continue past here. Damn it, it did! Are you with me? Kill that, and then go all the way up this thing. Mm. 
I was young, I knew everything. She a punk who rarely ever took advice. Now I'm guilt-stricken, sobbing with my head on the floor. Stopping baby's breath, a shoe full of rice and... She was touching her face. Okay, so something like that I think is going to work. Might as well while I'm at it. Do my smoothing groups. Do no, this is a uh, this is a new a new totem. I uh, I just finished uh, doing the UVs on one of the other totems, and uh, it made me realize that uh, I go show you the UVs here, Rich. There's a lot of empty space in my UVs, and nothing I can do is going to pack this in a way that's going to be more optimal in the space. And so, what I'm going to do instead is just pack another totem in here with it. So, two meshes will utilize the same texture and material. Which, I mean, is is a good way to go about um, optimizing things. Uh, in this case, it's optimization by necessity, but, you know, still, still does exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, so the first issue I've got here... Uh, is that I'm at 26 edges, which is not what I want. Now, luckily, I can see places where, like, this... That shouldn't be there. Um, but that still brings me to 25. And they are fairly evenly spaced. Uh, which, again, is not, not gonna work for me. So what I need to do is collapse one. I'm gonna remove one edge here for a second. And I'm going to re-regularize this. And the goal here is to actually get this thing to be as... Uh, as uh, rounded here as possible. I'll try and center it over the... Or the bolt here too. Okay, come on. Then we're going to go up. And then we're going to go in. Uh, this. Here. And I think I'm actually going to go up a little bit. And then we'll go in again. And we'll just collapse that for now. We were merely freshmen. I'm just looking at some reference of this thing here so I can make sure I get it accurate. Okay, so I need to remove edges and then put the edges back in. What am my polygon count? A couple hundred? 1800. Well, it's... More than I would have expected, but that's okay. That's okay. All right. Um, so I need to do this. Let's see. From the top here. Get rid of two. Leave one. Get rid of two. Leave one. Uh, I do this. Uh, Cass, I've been doing this for... Uh, it's been a month since I've been doing this project. Um, but it's been most of the summer, uh, Monday to Friday, I do, um, eight to midnight or so. And so, yeah, 
Exactly what Rich said. And, uh, yeah, sometimes we've got a, a fairly decent crowd here talking about all kinds of things, and sometimes it's pretty quiet, and it's just a handful of people, but um, I have done the entirety of this project as a live stream, and so everything that I've done is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not what I wanted. One, two, three. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, Bray. I didn't even know you were here, dude. The nice thing, too, Cassandra, is that this is a um, a group of mostly former students. Um, I do have a couple of uh, a couple of friends from various industry places that are here on occasion, um, but this is primarily former students, which is nice too. Two, three, four, five, six. There we go. That's what I wanted. And fuck things up just like I always do. All that shit seems to disappear when I'm with you. <laughs> I'm just gonna make sure that I don't uh, get dinged for um for any copyright stuff. I, I sing off key on purpose to make sure I don't get copyright dings. <laughs> and if you believe that, I got some snake oil you might be interested in too. Okay, so let's add my three edges back. One, two, three. Now, let's go and remove this and bridge it back. Okay, and then same thing on the bottom. Two, three, four, five, six. Delete. It's been a while. Logging myself straight. And it's been a while. Okay, so it curves down at the corners. So corners. Since out in the way the candles light your face. Let's do that. Just the way you taste and everything. I'm gonna bring that down to two, one, two. I kinda blame this on my father. <laughs> and it's been a while. Okay, let's add a little chamfer to this guy. And so I said I'm sorry. So add a chamfer to this guy and to this guy. Okay. One nice big bolt. And uh, speaking of big, I'm going to scale it down here a little bit. And we'll origin it. And since this is a totem, it's going to get sunk into the world. And then effect pivot only. Bounce that back. Know that you are my Bible. Okay, so projects, cabin in the woods, FBX, totem meshes. And this is the reanimated. Reanimated, where are you? The reanimated. Okay, back into Maya. Meanwhile, back in Maya. 
Let's go and import this. It's a reanimated. No shame. That is a big ass bolt. Know that you are my Bible. Okay, let's move UVs over here. And go cut some edging into this. Do, do, do. Um, oh, son, sons of bitches. Is that a problem? Get out, I'm scared. Uh, where are you, mesh? Fill hole. Well, that's not going to work. But of course, but of course. Again, lovely thing about Maya is being able to edit your mesh while you have the UV window open. Which is not something Max allows you to do. And actually, if I'm being honest, Max doesn't allow you to do fuck all. Crashes when you edit UVs. Okay. I'll just grab one rando. You're there. Okay, you didn't go all the way around, so let's fix that. That's a split. Okay, let's see how this does. Beautiful. Bring this out. Okay, this needs a split. Let's take a moment and break the ice, so my intentions are known. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Being damned alone. I should go through the list of totems here to see if there's anything else. Flat metal like this that I can throw in here as well. No. No. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Tell me who you see. Who not to be. I don't. I am your mom. Nail clipper. The giant could go in here as well. And in the wheel. Yeah. 
Yeah, I saw that, Rich. Um, actually, it, <laughs> it, it's funny. Um, I saw it and uh and watch the video of the of the release and and the the newness the new hotness that is there um and then got emails from about 19 former students uh saying hey did you see the new update <laughs> like you people forget who i am <laughs> it's cool i'm glad it supports udims now though it's going to uh it's going to open up a lot. It's not just supporting UDIMs, but it's it's painting across UDIMs, which is crazy that that's a thing. Okay, so I do have a little bit of a problem here in that the bolt actually thinks it's way larger than the screw or than the uh the shackle which shouldn't be the case it should be like this uh modify and freeze transformations now that is impacting my uv pack It's cool, man. I can't. I can't wait to play with it. Fuck sticks. <laughs> Things are not improving. Come on. Okay, that's what I wanted. Thank you. 
Okay, I'm pleased with that, finally. Now, uh, let's bring them, oh, shit, how am I gonna do this? Okay. Let's bring them both into max. We'll put them together. I mean, this is the, the goblin. I'm not in the totems, so that's why I can't see it. I'll put them in the goblin. And delete this guy. Uh, this. We're going to go to dismemberment goblin uh, totem. Ask and don't ask why. It's not a lesson, but a learned in time. Okay, I'm gonna bake without high poly here. Do this at 2k. Bring this up to 16. Low poly is high. We're gonna go anti aliasing, match by mesh name, ID. Good health and good time. Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial. It was worth all the while. Okay. Now these two things, and this is why I wanted to uh, join them, is that they are going to essentially be made out of the same material, uh, which should make my life a little bit simpler here. Okay, here we go. So my goal here is to um, make these big iron, um, rusty iron bits. And so, uh, let's, throw an iron material on here which will get me 90% of the way there let's make sure that said material uh, is using I uh, know triplaner it should be on triplaner this guy triplaner this guy triplaner this guy, triplanar. And this hole, that is me. Okay. So many things. And I'm being here to me, sad, overwhelmed. From the gym. Happy now. 
I need Yeah, I'm gonna get a UV seam here. And I'll be there to me. I'd rather not have a UV seam. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I agree that Rich, that would be super useful. Um, are you feeling in this hole? Tell me. There we go. That should be it for UV seams. Now, let's go put these. Cass, are you still here? Are you still watching? Just hear me out. If it's not perfect, I'll perfect it till my heart explodes. I can make it through another of your episodes. Wear me out, but it's all right now. That's. Okay, now, in 3DS Max, I'm going to import them. You wear me out. It's all right now. And now I can export them separately. Let's change this for now. Let's see what I have selected. Oh, damn it. You too. Tell me anything. I think the scale is about right on both of them. Okay, let's export this guy. Wear me out. And with the export done, we can export this one. Okay. So back into Unreal. I should be able to now bring those in. So that is the goblin. And the reanimated. Let's go home, get stoned. We can end up making love instead of misery.
That looks good. That's good. Okay. So now I'm going to put these in the world. Where do I put them? Uh, the next shackle, I think I'm just going to go up here. Whoa, whoa. And the bolt. I'll put the bolt right here. Okay, let's go to my blueprints here, totem list, and find my numbers. Uh, so the, the goblin is number five. That's this one. I'm gonna put a five in. Yeah, had you not seen that one, Brandon? That's one of my totems. That's for doing the humanoid alien. So there's the next shackle. And then this one is reanimated. Is somewhere around here. You are dead. What the hell? Where are you? Do -do 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 -do. There he is, 13. Okay, now we'll just put this back again. Okay. Let's make sure these two, these two guys work. Uh, I put them over here. Okay. Due to the weight, you realize that this binding is made out of pure iron. Its construction gives you the impression that it was meant to hold back someone or something rather mean. On closer inspection, it also appears to be a little undersized. Okay, I'm pleased with that. Metal neck bolt. Strange that this bolt is warm to the touch and also some family of decay. Uh, why do you feel the need to pick up this stuff? There's some electrical burns on the underside of this bolt. Looks like someone, some serious voltage. Right. Okay. <laughs> I see what you did there, Rich. I'm gonna make me some soot. Uh, materials. This guy. And we're gonna make this black as rough as I can get it. And non metallic is fine. And then we're gonna add a black mask to this. And so do this with a brush. I want some kind of blurry, fuzzy. That'll work. Okay. 
And now we got some soot on it. So now I'm going to re-export these textures. Ah, oh, you fucking nut. Oh, I hate when that happens. Boo -doo -doo. I now have a duplicate of all my textures. So, uh, dismember my goblin. Dismember my goblin, dismember my goblin. Those are the old ones. The new ones are going to get renamed. The renaming that made duplicates. Underscore Lambert one underscore. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. And with that, I should be able to re import these textures and have them just work. Uh, they went into Werewolf and Iron F G H I. I. I don't see them. Oh, they're here. Okay, good. Save all. It does really uh, help when you read the instruction. Thank you, Rich. Um, it really does help if you read the uh, the description cards. Um, because this bolt needed singe. It needed soot on the outside of it. And without that, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. That's the egg. Um, Brandon, if you hadn't seen the egg, here it is up close. Um, and I made it, I made it pulsate. And there's actually, hard to see in the lighting here. But there's translucency to this thing, and there's they're squirming inside it. And so, yeah. Okay. I do got to finish that. So I want to take a, I want to get a count here with my totems to see where I'm at now. I'm past halfway. I know, I know that much. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty four. So I'm I'm one past halfway. Um, some of the ones that I've got left to do is there's a few of them that are going to be pretty intricate that uh, I'm still kind of worried about. Uh, Reptilius, what time is it? It's eleven thirty. I'm gonna see if I can't. Do this. So, for Reptilius, I wanted a miniature version of a Tyrannosaurus skull. And, uh... This is one of those things that if I can download an actual scan of this thing, I'll be able to, uh... I'll be able to uh, to generate the detail from that instead of having to spend the time sculpting a Tyrannosaurus skull. And luckily, there are websites like Thingiverse where um, this stuff is uh, is readily readily available for people to three D print, uh, which is cool. Um, files. What do we got? STL. So I'm gonna need. Okay. Let's go to my iron. No. Nope. Kevin in the Woods reference. And let's make a new one here. Skull. Let's go and grab these guys. Rod base jaw skull. Okay. I just need the bottom two. 
So I'm done with that. And then I need a conversion STL to OBJ. STL is a pretty common, um, a pretty common uh, 3D printing file format. So converted that one. And we'll do this one. Will you call the unforgiven? Oh, what I know. So I'm going to bring these into Max. They're going to be too big um, as is to bring in. Uh, I believe scale-wise, I mean, this is not going to be the size of a T-Rex skull. Um, we're probably going to be dealing with something that's been, uh, you know, made made to be printed and thrown on a desk or something like that. And so that is my impression of this. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, so we're going to go up, up, and reference, and skull, and I'm going to grab the skull first. Now I actually have a, I have a miniature of this, and my plan was to do my own, yeah, it's 167,000. Yeah, it's not fantastic. But it'll work. Oh yeah, there's the the slot for the um, the peg. Uh, okay, so file import from your eyes. There's no mistake. Really. <laughs> Oh, 3D printers. Uh... Okay. So I just need to seat these in the right way here. That's kind of how it would go in there. It looks like the scale is wrong on them. How is that? How is that possible? There's no mistake. Let's kill the material on these. Kill that. So yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is not bother with the jaw. This is... Now that's funny. This is not scan data. It's made to look like scan data, but this is not not scan data these lines here they are the clay buildup brush in zbrush this is somebody's sculpt so yeah i'm just gonna use the top of this thing Let's try that again.
Okay. So there's step one. Let's go and export this. Oy vey. Um, I'm going to go into the OBJ folder for this. I'm going to go OBJ. Something like this. My world is a flood. Slowly I become one with the mud. Uh, where'd you go? Squeal? No wine skull. Lift me up. Lift me up. Okay, so Geo. Let's duplicate this first. Then go to the Geo. And we are going to go to Z Remesh. I'm going to bring this down to. Let's try 3000. All around. Touching the ground. When I'm falling, I'm weak and I'm dying. I need you to hold me, dying again. Let's see what ZBrush can do with this. Okay. What do we end up to? 9,000. And I lost the teeth. When I'm falling, you can close that off. That's not going to save me enough, though. I'm darling. Let's go take a look at this. Need you to hold me and keep me from dying again. Yeah, it's too high, Polly. I'm at 18,000, which is not going to suffice. I think what I'm going to need to do is remove the teeth and add them later. Because this is not going to cut it. Of our lives. Crazy thing that we I don't know we don't. It got higher. I said half and it got higher. I wanted all I more. Okay, let's smooth the teeth out because they're gonna be easy enough to add. Every time I put that record on it Still just got back to 9,000 
Let me see what I can do about removing some of the details. I know I don't need. Crazy train, and I kept it on the track. Let I act this way. Okay. Let's set it at 1.5. Every time I put that record on. Okay, so 1.5 gets me into the right range. So let's delete this guy. Duplicate this guy. Try it again. Hey, Christian. You're here late, my friend. You still camping? Let him back. Come on, Zebrush. Go, cool, man. Okay, so that got me in range. Smooth this out. Smooth that out and smooth out the little pipe. And remesh it again. And 597 becomes... 54. Let's again kill the teeth. It's kind of hard to talk right now. It's good, man. Where'd you end up going? My girl's in. Sometimes I wish she was you. There we go. Okay. I got it low enough that I'm happy. I just got to make sure I can get the detail back into it, which seems to be the case. Let's increase my projection distance. Girl, you make it hard to be faithful. By Perry Sound. Provincial, provincial park up that way. Tonight. And yes, I've dreamt of you too. Well, girl's in the next room. Wish she was you. Cool, man. I'm from up around that area. And so I, I used to go camping a lot in that area. Out near uh, South River, there's a little place called Eagle Lake with a provincial campsite called Mikasu that uh, my family's been going to it for, for generations now. I'm 
I want to bring my kids there next year, um, and they'll be the fifth generation that have uh, that have gone there. Okay, so I'm pleased with this now. Let me go and reduce the polygon count here again. Let's go to Z plugins, UV master, and unwrap this sucker. Okay, and then I'm going to go normal map. I don't even think I need to do this. Let's export this. Cabin in the woods, FBX, totem meshes. Let's switch this to be FBX. And this is uh, Reptilius. EQR Reptilius. Ugh. I've been wearing headphones too long. It's starting to hurt the cartilage in my ear. I feel like I'm gonna get I feel like I'm gonna get cauliflower ear from uh from wearing the goddamn headphones so much. Okay, so that's going to work quite nicely. All I've got to do is just make myself some teeth here now. I can't have a T-Rex skull without teeth. Uh, maybe I'll try, let's see if ZBrush can do this. Let's go back to the other skull. I've been everything you want to be, oh, cult of personality. And Kennedy, I'm the cult of personality. Let's see what this does. Nobel Prize. That looks so nice. Okay, so we'll throw a quick dynamesh on this and then a z remesh and see what we get Personality. Nope. So I'm going to be better off making these in Max. Neon lights. Go old fashioned re to apologize me some teeth. Do 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 
No, I just uh I grabbed it online. It's from a uh it's actually from a uh, a 3D printing website where you can uh, download models to make 3D prints of them. And uh, I would I was actually looking for something like a little uh, I don't know more more realistic, something from an actual T Rex. Find uh, Sue's skull if I could, um, but I just grabbed the first thing that came around because. I also have to get this shit done. And so... Yeah. Yeah, it actually looks like it might have been something that somebody ZBrushed. Um, when I looked at the... Uh, the jaw... It looks like there is some artifacting from a uh, somebody using the clay buildup brush. Which is a uh, pretty good indicator that this came from... Uh, ZBrush, and somebody sculpted it. If I had an unlimited amount of time, I would just be making my own everything. Oh, you know what? I think I'm being stupid doing this. I should just make a fucking cone and shape it the right way all the way around. You're a wannabe stripper with a microphone. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. I mean, this will work, but... I mean, the goal is to... How high poly is this? It's only 64. Yeah, this will work. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make... I'll make one tooth. And I'm just going to clone it all over the place. You're sucking on a paparazzi. Gotta shake that ass because we know you can't sing. You're nothing but a strip tease. All right, so that's a hundred polys. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So twenty eight hundred. Nah, it's not fantastic, but it'll work. Gotta shake that ass, cause we know you can't sing. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna call this quits for now. My brain's fried. Let's go and save this. Projects, Cabin in the Woods, Max. I'll call this Skull for now. And... We'll call that it for the stream, too. And so, just like that, um, you know, thanks for hanging out. 
Thanks for coming to watch what we're doing. Bye, Christian. I'll be back tomorrow night. Plug away at this a little bit further and see uh, see how far we can get with this here. I've got more than half the totems done. So the uh, the more I can start finishing those off, the better. And uh, And yeah, I need to get some more stuff in the basement done in terms of... Uh, just meshes to fill up the space. I have an idea about doing some uh, some plastic bins and some milk crates and stuff that I can throw on many of the shelves. And uh, I think I'm going to go and retexture. I really like these boxes that uh, are part of the uh, part of the Mega Scans library, but they're too clean. And so I might bring one of those. I might retopo one of those, project the textures onto it, bring it into Substance Painter. And uh, and dirty and damage it up a little bit so that it fits the with the basement a little bit more. And so yeah, I think that's that's what's on the uh, the docket. And I'll put another one of these over here. Maybe something like that. Ah, don't like that. I'm just trying to make sure I can see everything that's here. Let me just scale this down a little bit. Let me put it there. There we go. Now I can see the skull a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for hanging out and uh, and spending some time here with me this evening as I uh, work away on this. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the ending is in sight here. And so, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow night and uh, we'll do a little bit more of this.